So as a clinician, it's you have to kind of walk this fine line because you do have to validate the patient's concerns, but you also have to you also have to rule out the kind of the biological factors, right? Like, is it a neck issue? Is it a visual issue? Is it a vestibular issue? You know, is there some organic thing here? And then once you're going through that and you've been able to rule some of that stuff out, it's now, okay, well, we're likely dealing with something where we have negative thought patterns and all this other stuff. But I try to frame that right away on, you know, visit number one of, I do the full, and if you haven't seen it yet, go to one of my, my Instagram posts, I say, what is a concussion? And I kind of explain, this is what a concussion is, this is what happens, this is what post-concussion syndrome is, this is our, these are the potential causes of why that could happen, and here's how we're gonna tackle each one of them. Just having that education and knowing that, yes, it's a temporary injury and there's some things that can cause, you know, long-term effects, makes people feel a little bit more at ease and being able to kind of, you know, lower that down. Uh, working with beliefs and expectations, given the lay public's view of concussion symptoms as more functionally limiting and persistent than what has been demonstrated in research studies, careful el elicitation of patient's expectation regarding concussion recovery may be a useful starting point in a given clinical encounter. False beliefs should be carefully corrected. Framing may be important as well. In addition to correcting incorrect beliefs as they emerge in the clinic, clinicians can also make deliberate efforts to provide positive and realistic expectations for recovery. In support of this effort, the literature regarding support and positive expectation setting following acute concussion has, on the whole, been favorable. In these studies, clinicians offered emotional support and provided reassurance that the symptoms are generally benign and temporary shortly after presentation to the emergency department, resulting in reduced symptom burden, decreased anxiety, and improved functional outcomes as compared with standard care. Um, even focusing on the symptoms, I know we do this a lot in our clinics, we ask the symptom scale, right? Rate each of these symptoms on a zero to six scale. And we do this every day, right? And, you know, but we don't do it in the patients that have some of this stuff going on because constantly reminding them of the potential symptoms, they go, headache? Oh yeah, 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 I do have a headache. And it's a reminder of it being there. They suggest a better way to do it for these patients that may have be presenting with some of these more psychogenic um, types of things to say what symptoms are you experiencing and let them come up with the descriptor to describe what they're feeling because if you lay it out there fatigue I'm tired right now right I had a shit sleep so does that mean I have a concussion no like it happens day to day right so but reminding them of the potential symptoms and causes keeps it top of mind and they look for it so we have to we have to be careful with that as well